Hey guys, CBCuber. Today I'm going to show you how to model, shade, and animate this animated play button. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up my scene a little bit. I'm going to get rid of this camera and I'm going to get rid of this default light. And I'm going to be working with this cube, so I don't need to delete it this time. I'm going to push this out just a little bit to give myself a little bit more space. Hit this cube using my left mouse button to orbit around. I'm just going to use the middle mouse button. Zoom in and out. I'm going to use my scroll wheel. And then if I want to pan around the scene, I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'll use my middle mouse button to pan around. You can also use these buttons up here respectively. This one will go in and out of camera view. This one just goes in and out of orthographic. You can also use the gizmo up here if you don't have a middle mouse button. Or you can come up to edit preferences and come over to input and you can emulate the three button mouse if you need to. While I'm here, I might as well go to systems and I'm gonna crank up my undo steps from 32 to 256. Just nice to have a little bit more leeway when you make mistakes and I will make mistakes. First thing I wanna do is I wanna make this look a little bit more like a play button. So to do that, I'm going to use my scale tool. To activate the scale tool, I'm gonna use the hot key of S and I wanna constrain it to the green axis or the Y axis. So I'm gonna hit Y on my keyboard and now I can go ahead and push it out just a little bit. I wanna make it a little bit skinnier this way. So that's the X axis. Kinda of looks like a briefcase a little bit. So that's done. I'm gonna go ahead and left click up here, double click and I'm gonna rename it and I'm gonna call it play button. So I, now I need the triangle that goes in the front of that play button. So I'm going to go ahead and hit shift A to add something. I'm going to add a mesh cube and I'm going to hit the S key to scale it down. Right around there looks pretty good and it's a little bit fat. I'm going to go ahead and scale it in the X axis. So I'm going to go ahead and hit SX to scale it and I'm going to scale it down. Maybe something like that. Now I want to move it because right now it's sitting inside of that other geometry right there. So I'm going to hit the G key to grab it and then I'm going to constrain it to the X axis to move it forward. And right about there, I want to have this little orange dot here sitting on near the front of that face. All right, so that looks pretty good. I get it. It doesn't really look like a triangle, but we're going to go ahead and fix that right now. I'm going to go ahead and click on the play button and I'm going to hide it by pressing H on my keyboard. So once I hit H, you'll notice that it disappears. It's not gone forever. If we look up here in the outliner, we can see that it is the play button and it's just hidden. You can see that little eyeball is closed. If I was to click on any one of these, it will hide the cube or it'll bring it back. I can hide the play button, hide it again. And you'll notice that these are sitting in a collection. If I was to hide the entire collection, everything will just disappear. Of course, it's still stored there. It's just, you know, hidden. If I want to bring everything back, I can hit Option or Alt H and that will bring everything back. I'm going to go ahead and rehide that play button. I'm going to click on the triangle that doesn't look like a triangle yet, but I am going to rename it and call it triangle. All right, so now I want to edit this. In order to edit these vertices, I'm going to need to go into edit mode. Right now, you can see up here in the left-hand side, it's object mode. If I can left-click on this, I can go into edit mode. I can also use the hot key of tab, which is what you're going to be using from here on out. So if I hit tab, it goes into object mode. If I hit tab again, it goes back into edit mode. For right now, I'm also going to come up and I'm going to toggle this x-ray so I can see through everything. Now I want this to be the front side of the triangle, so I'm going to go ahead and select both of those vertices. You can see the vertices. There's one there and there's one there. These are edges in between the vertices, and then of course faces are in between those. Now you can have vertices and edges with no faces, but can't have a face without edges, and you can't have edges without vertices. So I want to bring these together and I want to merge them together. So I'm going to go ahead and use the merge command. So I'm going to hit M on my keyboard and it's going to ask me where do I want to merge those. I want to merge them at the center. So I'm going to go ahead and left click on center and you can see it merges those two right into the center. I'm going to go ahead and select the other two ones. I could do the same thing or I can repeat my last action by hitting shift R on the keyboard and that will do the exact same action to whatever I have selected. All right, so that's the play button. There's only one more thing that we need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and tab back out and I am gonna add a modifier to this. I wanna add the bevel modifier. So to add a modifier to your object, come over to this little blue wrench, left click on it. That will bring you to the add modifier section. I'm gonna go ahead and left click on the add modifier, come down to bevel. There we go. And that looks actually pretty close to what I want. I'm gonna increase the amount just a little bit. I only want this one segment because if I start to add modifiers to this, like a subsurface modifier, it will start to make it in the exact shape that I want, but I don't want to do it just yet. I want to use this to make a cutout using a Boolean modifier into the play button. So let's go ahead and unhide the play button. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and select the play button. Now I'm gonna add a modifier using the left mouse button. I'm gonna go ahead and add a modifier. I'm gonna add the Boolean modifier. I wanna make sure that this is set to difference. Under object, I'm gonna left click that little square and then I'm gonna just click on triangle. You could also use the eyedropper to select the triangle if you want. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and click on the Boolean modifier and let's go ahead and add it because I want to make this cutout in the geometry, but first I need to move this over just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit G and Y to constrain it and move it over just a little bit. Right about there, it looks good. Now I want to apply this Boolean modifier. So I'm gonna come over to where it says Boolean and just to the right of that little camera, there's a little twirl down. I'm gonna hit that arrow and right where it says apply, I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. And now if I hide this triangle and I'm gonna go tab into the edit mode and we can see that the geometry is now applied. You can tell it's been applied because it has made this edge loop because something, there has to be a way for there to be these edge loops in here and this cutout. So what it did is it actually just made it, it's pretty messy. The Boolean tool does not give you good geometry ever. So you're always gonna have to come back and retopologize it or just live with it looking kind of ugly. So this is gonna be a really easy one to retopologize. So I'm just going to jump into this loop cut tool and I'm gonna create some loops to give all of these vertices and edges a place to go. I'm gonna go ahead and bring one over here, maybe right around there. Let's go ahead and bring one up here, maybe one down here a bit. Uh, that should probably be good for right now. Jump over to the knife tool because you probably noticed that it didn't make it all the way there. I'm also gonna turn off of this x-ray mode. Now I'm just going to click on this vertice here and I'm gonna knife over to this vertice here. Hit the space bar to activate that. Now I'm gonna grab this one over here, hit the space bar. Let's go ahead and grab this guy over here, space bar. Don't worry, we'll clean this up here in just a minute. Let's go ahead and grab this one here, space bar. And this one over here, space bar. And this one can go over here. All right, so we have a couple extra lines that we don't need. Let's go ahead and clean those up. Back over to the select box. You can also hit the W command. And I wanna be in edge select mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this edge right here. I'm going to right click and I would like to dissolve that edge. This one as well. I'm gonna go ahead and dissolve that edge. Let's go ahead and dissolve this edge. That looks pretty good. Now, I, I mean, you know, it's not the most amazing looking edge topology, but it's definitely better than it was. So these all have like spots and places where they're going. It makes a lot of sense now. Tab back out and we can see that it still looks okay. And that's just because, you know, if we were to add a shade smooth, you'll see it will look real ugly, but that's because there isn't a whole lot of geometry. So it's really relying on the geometry that is there in order to define it. So let's go ahead and go back into shade flat. And I want to add a modifier. We're going to add this subdivision surface modifier and let's turn it up a little bit. We can start to see that the triangle looks okay. It doesn't look amazing. We will fix that, but this kind of looks like a round blob. So we really need to add creases on the sides and edge loops to define where the subsurface modifiers will affect it and where there should be angles and you know sharp edges. Let's drop this all the way back down and we can turn it up a little bit and that's kind of fun because now you get to see exactly what the edge loops are doing. Tab in, you can see the box, the bounding box here, because in reality, these modifiers don't actually apply to the geometry fully until you actually apply them. But so we're not gonna apply it just yet because I wanna show you how these edge loops will define the geometry here. So to do this, let's go ahead and add an edge loop using the loop cut tool. And let's bring this one and you can see how we are defining where there will be harder edges. So we can go ahead and do that over on this side as well. I'm gonna go ahead and just push it out to the edge, push this maybe up to the front, maybe one to the back here. And so if we look at the back side, that's kind of what we want the front side to look like, but we'll have to come in here and we'll have to use the knife tool because it's not going all the way through and that's okay. So let's go ahead and jump over to the knife tool. You can also use the K command, but then you'll have to come back in and you'll actually have to uh, do it each time. So let's hit this vertice up here and I want it to go all the way down to the vertice down here, hit this space bar in order to activate that. And then let's grab this one up here, all the way down to this edge loop here, space bar. Now we're missing some edge loops here. We probably want some going horizontal here. So let's go back into the loop cut tool and we'll just kind of define this little area as well. That's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit K on our keyboard and we'll just run this all the way. K on my keyboard again. And there we go. And that looks pretty good. That's definitely better than what we had. We can probably use some more edge loops 
around here as well. And to do that, we'll actually use the knife tool. So let's go ahead and jump into the knife tool. I want this edge over here to be a little bit more defined. And so it needs some kind of edge loop in order to tell the computer that, hey, there's supposed to be some kind of crease or some kind of harder edge here. So let's start cutting around here and we can start kind of wide and then we can make our way a little bit closer after the fact. It doesn't really matter. I mean, we can always move these around if we need to, but that actually looks pretty good. I think I want to put some edge loops on the center on the inside as well. So let me go ahead and add one up here. And let me get a little bit closer. So it's kind of hard to place it exactly. Sometimes you have to, you know, kind of play around with it. So that looks good. That's, uh, I'm very happy with that. Let me go ahead and tab out and see what it looks like. And if I shade smooth, you can see that it still looks really good. That is done. We're gonna go ahead and we'll put a material on it, uh, but we're gonna do that in the next episode. Let's first, let's go ahead and finish up this triangle. Now, this is really cool. Like I could leave it as a gem and then we can make a gem material. And I'll show you how to do that in another episode. So right now I'm actually just going to use a subsurface modifier to start adding some geometry in this. But before I do that, I would like to tab into it and give it a few loops as well. So let's go ahead and bring one up to the front here. And I'm going to go into this x-ray mode so I can see a little bit better and I'll put one in the back out of x-ray mode and let's go ahead and tab out and let's add another modifier. We'll add a subdivision surface modifier and let's give it a couple levels, maybe something like that. I think three seems to be kind of the sweet spot and then we'll go ahead and shade it smooth. And so now when I hit GX in order to constrain it, oh, wrong one. Now if I hit GX and I pull it out, we can see it looks like it belongs in there, like it inserts into that little spot. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna use that to our advantage here in the next animation. I'm gonna go ahead and apply these now because I'm pretty happy with the way that these are. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply each of these. And now those are baked in. So now if we tab in here and we look, we haven't actually added this one yet. So let's go ahead and tab back out and we can apply this modifier as well. So now when I tab in, look how much geometry we have. That's gonna be good for now. Let's go ahead and jump into the next section, which will be materials.